Hello Rabbags, it's Jade. Welcome to another Tribes of Midgard guide today. If you've already seen my obvious tips, you should hopefully know the basics of the game now. What you're going to be doing, progression, and a bunch more on actually how to play the game. But this is a little bit more advanced, but still in the beginner stages. I'm going to talk about how to deal with the hell things, how to upgrade your settlement a little bit more, maybe the best class to use, some tips in taking down some of the giants, when to go and fight and when not to, as well as what you should be up upgrading first and a bunch more to do with the NPCs and exploring the world. If you're still fairly new to the game do go and check out that video maybe first and then come back to this one and then it'll roll on with each other nicely and then I will be doing an advanced guide very soon showing you guys how to prepare properly for the actual boss fight the raid at the end as well as explore some of the most dangerous areas and unlocking the best loot. As always, first, with Survival Games news, opinions, guides, make sure you subscribe and you've got notification bell dinged. And do leave a like, it really makes me want to make more of this content. Let's go. Maybe this should have been in my obvious tutorial, but go ahead and look in progress and take a look in the journal. This will show you where to find every single one of the resources. I've seen it a bunch of times on one of my videos that you guys want to know where something is. We'll just go and look in here. It will give you the picture of what it looks like and where to find it. All the resources are here. The only thing you're going to have to get used to if you're fairly new is the biomes and the locations. It's even got some of them listed as well. Your rewards that you get for XP leveling up are okay. Mostly cosmetic, but there are some useful ones. So make sure you're using these starter kits. Again, another obvious tip, but go to customize and absolutely make sure that you are equipping one of these in your starter kits area. It's a lot cheaper to find resources to make tools than it is the weapons, so go with the weapon kit. That said, the harvesting kit does come with a loot room, so that's really valuable early on in the game as well. Get you extra stuff. I find the bow and arrow one pretty useless. You'll find lots of runes that will give you buffs, or your classes have lots of archer buffs. And the heat one, well, unless you're going to be a specific scout class with friends and you're going to be one to explore the map, but if you go through some of the hotter areas, it's probably going to be too high a level for you anyway. And Captain Obvious strikes again, but don't forget to spend any golden horns you've got on runes in the store rather than cosmetics. There's only one cosmetic you can buy currently, but the other items you can see like the die and the axe recipes, you don't necessarily need that. Go for the rune, gives you an extra chance of dropping when you're actually playing. Runes will pop up randomly while you're playing. This simply unlocks the chance for this one particularly to drop. In my obvious tips, I told you guys that you should try out the survival mode and just make the game a lot easier. And it's still valid, you can still explore lots of the biomes, try new stuff out, and you just find it a tiny bit easier. But it's still dog hard. One thing I noticed though was, don't make the map too tiny. What will actually happen is the Jotan will come and attack your base much quicker. It's also worth leaving the arrow on on the Yotan as well to make it again a bit easier to see where they are. You just get an experience with the game, don't concentrate too much on the actual XP gains. As soon as you spawn you really want to just be gathering as many resources as you possibly can. If you didn't get the Harvester perk, don't forget to use your specials just to get yourself a little bit of quick wood. Also do the same for your stone. This way you can head to the village with enough resources to craft your tools and then you'll be fully good to go. Use the paths to travel absolutely everywhere. The map can be super annoying when you go to somewhere and hit a cliff or a beach or waterfront and there's seemingly no way past. If you actually follow the paths, it pretty much leads you to all the right points of interest that you need to go to eventually. This is also where the giants will normally walk across. Never wander aimlessly gathering resources, always head in one direction until you maybe get to a shrine. When you get in your settlement, there is one person you need to upgrade the most straight away. This unlocks all the materials you need, obviously by now you should know, and getting cut stone and raw iron is a real challenge early game on your own. You really do need to concentrate on getting enough resources to open up the quarry. I would say go for the quarry and then the woodworking one at first, leave the hunting one for later. On average, if you can get that up by day five, you're winning any later than that. And yeah, you're probably going to still run out a lot of resources when you desperately need to reinforce by day seven or eight. 
When it comes to fortifications, like I said, the quarry is probably the best bet because then that's going to give you resources to then go and make the rest of the defences a lot easier. Then work on the archery towers. Don't forget also that the gate towers, the gates can be opened. So if you do see the gate about to explode because enemies are about to break in, open it up and let them in. It's a lot, lot better. The gates do eventually regain their health over time, although it's a little bit slow. It's better than having to pay another big amount just to get new gates. You can't upgrade any of the farms, but you can upgrade the towers and the gates. And they're pretty meaty once you get to level 3. And don't forget to replenish the archery towers. It will give you a set amount of arrows, but you do need to give it some more. Or you can swap it out for more, more advanced ones. This game gives you no time at all. So when you see things that are green, it means you can craft it. You think, great, but be careful. Sometimes you'll be missing out on being able to craft more refined resources, not realizing that actually, if I need branches, I can go ahead and make branches out of wood. That's the only thing that's stopping me from crafting some of the wooden boards. If you pay too much attention to what's green, you won't realize that you can actually craft or refine items to get the more advanced ones that you need. It costs 750 XP to level up your Tinker so that she can now craft square stone as well as the wooden planks and obviously the raw iron. 250 the first time, 500 the second time. Don't forget to upgrade your tools as well, that's super important so you don't have to keep running back and forth because they're broken. Or go ahead and craft double of the tools so you can carry on getting more stuff. Don't pass up an opportunity to destroy some of these barricades, they often drop refined resources that you need to upgrade your village. They'll often drop a lot of the raw iron and wooden boards that you need, as well as maybe sometimes some cut stone. Silver are these little nodules. A lot of you guys are having problems finding it, so that's what it looks like. And don't forget that some resources only spawn at night, like the rowan tree, that goes into glowy dew rowan drops or some rubbish like that at night time, as well as mushrooms turn into something else, a different type of resource at night time. So you need to pick them at various different times to craft some of the higher, higher end gear. You do not want to fight one of these guys early game, especially if you're not leveled enough, so just run away. They will eventually stop chasing you, so don't panic. And that pretty much goes for all enemies. I've seen a few comments saying that they couldn't escape some creatures, but you pretty much can run away from almost every creature in the game. So if you're underpowered, better to run away and live another day. Obviously, some of the biomes are going to need lots of resources that you desperately need, but don't go exploring somewhere really super tough just to go and get some silver or some other items that you don't necessarily need in the first few days. It's all about the iron. I can't stress it enough and stone to either get your quarries up and running or get some defenses up and running. You can focus on some of this other stuff when you've got a stable foundation and your base is secure. That's when you need to go and get more of the exotic materials to start crafting much better weapons and armors. But even then, crafting level two Two level three stuff is still usually using some of the stuff that you find anyway from some of the small encampments as well as rewards for taking on other bigger creatures along the way exploring the map so don't focus too much trying to long it out in one biome just to get resources that you won't use for ages when it comes to blessings i find the guardian glass is one of the better ones solo you need to defeat three Yotan in one saga mode session, so it should be okay if you grouped up with a few people. Make it your priority if you join a public session and just focus on you taking on the giants. And although the shield is a bit useless in most of the combat classes, it really holds its own in this one. You get some really cool special moves, especially when you're defending against a bunch of enemies. You can increase your health by 40%, you get more fire efficiency from it or ice efficiency, damage attacks and yeah that shield ability that you hold onto your rage and let it go when you're defending is a really good one too. The warrior is a good class but if I'm going for it I am always going to be trying to choose the guardian as I do think it's the best class so far. Even if you're going to be a melee character do obviously make sure you still craft a bow. Range combat is a must at times so always have at least one equipped. Also, do craft some arrows. If you find some small bones, if you manage to get to a Smoky Highlands or some drop from some enemies, these do a lot more damage than the just infinite ones that you have. I mean, even better if you can craft something like explosive arrows too. 150 damage, save these bad boys for a really tough enemy. But sometimes you might be better off waiting until the Yotan appears. And if it's a dark Yotan, then hopefully the Thunder Arrows are going to do a lot better. And likewise, if it's a Thunder God, then the Dark Arrows are going to be better. So try not to craft maybe too many of these special ones until you really need it against one of the Giants. 
Obviously you want your tree to have as much life in it as possible, but keeping it around 5,000 health is a good start, all the way up to like seven or eight. After that, you really do want to try and keep it above 7,000 at possible. The tree of life replenishes your health when it's blue. It does it quite slowly with each pulse, but yeah, if you're a bit low, don't necessarily go and activate this one. See if you can actually heal yourself just by being close to it. Also do remember that this is a timer. When you're playing with others, when you activate it, that means no one else can activate it for that set time. So give a shout out that you're healing just in case someone else desperately needs it. Now you can leave the tree to fend for itself for the first couple of days. It should be just about okay, but it might slip to around 3000 health. And obviously souls can be troublesome to get sometimes. Now when it's guarding the lanes, the bottom ones are actually usually okay. Your NPCs will probably take care of them easier. What you need to do is really help out the guys on the left and the right. Because the Sirius here pretty much goes and helps out, it usually means that one side might end up being left. Always rescue one of your NPCs, try and pick them up. Unless there's another one next to it, it may take a few seconds to revive one, but it's definitely worth it as they'll hold their own against a couple of them. Like I said, it's not foolproof, but you do notice that the bottom run is the one that you don't have to worry about as much. As long as none of the big health things come through. So bear that in mind when you go to upgrade any of your gates. Maybe focus on archery towers for the left and the right at the top. The Blood Moon is a special night that usually happens, I do believe, on day four. And yeah, it's a pretty challenging night. You're going to have much more of the advanced health things, including bombers, as well as these guys that are just huge, massive tanks. If they get close to the tree, they will drain the health out of it pretty rapidly as well. So don't be afraid to sink whatever souls you've got into the tree and do your best. Use your traps as well. It's about the only time they're useful. Dump any traps you've got always in front of you in the lanes. Then bombers are really deadly, so try and take them out before they get too close. Make it through the Blood Moon though, and you've got a night off. Day 5, day night 5 will give you a rest, so you've got a chance to regroup, go and get resources. Make sure your tree in life is really had enough souls back into it, again at least 5,000. And go and see if you can hurry up and get to your quarries made if you haven't already done it by now. Quests are going to be one of the best ways to get XP. Event quests are limited time around 22 minutes and it means just go to the area, find the creature like a stag or some roosters, pet them and that's the quest complete. They often are a bit further distance so you might want to still leave it till a bit later until you've got enough gear to get through some dangerous areas but otherwise you could take a chance and hopefully complete it pretty super quick. You've got a good amount of time to do these events but don't leave them too late. They do respawn and you will get more but it's definitely something you should consider doing regularly as you need the particular drops that drop from them, the fragments, to open up the portal to take on the lair boss eventually. That said, in survival mode, there is no lair boss as far as I'm aware, so the portal becomes a bit useless, so you might as well just sell some of the fragments unless they're needed to craft anything else. I don't think they are. Another quick event is rescuing the prisoners. You have to defeat quite a lot of high-level enemies around it sometimes. You get the same rewards as the rooster and the stag mission, Around 600 souls, so it's definitely worth doing these to replenish your tree and obviously you get a ton of XP. Not 100% sure but I'm going to point it out, I regained all my health here and I can't tell if it was because I leveled up or it was because I did the event, let me know. So that's the limited events, but what about the actual personal quests? Well they're really super important too. You'll get the same kind of rewards as the limited time events but sometimes you also get a special weapon a recipe unlocked for completing it or the recipe itself plus lots of valuable potions and elixirs. It doesn't tell you what you're going to have to actually do, only a vague description or clue, but you're pretty much going to have to kill 10 things or raid a encampment or give over five other items. So be prepared that you may need more health potions and other items to do when you get there. Pick one and just head straight to it, gathering maybe the vital resources on the way. As I said earlier, stick a direction and go in that direction until you hopefully hit a place where you can teleport back to and gather the resources that you really need, not every single item you can. Maybe the first day you can get away with that, but after that you just focus on iron and stone and maybe a little bit of flint. Every second is vital and the quicker you get the quarry farm set up, the more chance you've got of reinforcing your encampment. It's absolutely vital you focus on that and getting your tinker upgraded so you can craft and refine the right materials. If a chest is honourable, that means everyone can come and get some loot from it, so you'll all get different types of loot, it won't run out. Otherwise, if it's just a plain wooden chest, only you get loot from that one. 
So always clear encampments out to get more loot. When hell things pop up saying that it's pretty much time to go home, really do make sure you are contemplating leaving soon. I'm going to teleport back. You can do this early game and you won't have to worry. You'll still get it regenerated when you really need it in a while. Get into the habit of dumping everything off. The more that you put this stuff in here, the more that everyone can start upgrading the camp and not just being it down to you. It is a pain in the butt at the moment that there is no give all button. So you've got to sit here and just click everything. As you can hear quite loudly in the background as I record this. Although the amount of times I've gone to upgrade one of my quarries or farms and realise I don't have the materials, don't forget to take them out of the chest when you go to do that. You don't actually need to have it on you when you're in your village. Also, when you die, don't immediately panic that you've got to go and get your resources, especially if you've been dumping your stuff off. Unless there's something really specific you need from it, you could pretty much just leave that chest until you go and buy naturally. Otherwise, you could spend ages wasting time running back and forth across the map, especially if you haven't activated the shrines. So dump your gear, dump the resources in the chest. Upgrading your NPCs doesn't just mean you get more loot, it also means they do more damage when you also got a raid from the hell things. One annoying thing is that a lot of the armors and weapons don't automatically equip when you buy a new ones or upgrade them. So do check your inventory from time to time and make sure you've got the best gear on possible. I'm pretty sure if you've left any tools or weapons inside the big community box, these will be given to you if you run out. But you do have to be within the village to receive it automatically. In early game, you might want to consider just using axes as swords take quite a lot of iron where axes use a lot less of the valuable resource you need at the very beginning. And when it comes to repairing, sometimes you've got to weigh up whether or not you've got a bunch of souls. So it kind of makes sense to go ahead and use some just to repair your bow or your swords. Armor, I don't think has ever degraded on me. So it's pretty versatile, it's pretty durable. So don't worry about necessarily repairing it until it's really nearly broke. And supposedly as well, if item is completely broke, it costs more to repair. Then other times, it's better just to go ahead and craft a brand new weapon. Again, as long as it doesn't take up too many of the key resources you need to upgrade your settlement, it might be worth just making a brand new one or a different style. Don't rely on the maces that get dropped a lot by the enemies. They're pretty poo. When you come across ruins, you need to build up to them. Normally, you're going to have to make a ramp. It usually only takes two ramps as well. You'll often get some of these building pieces as drops from defeating mobs or finding it in loot as well. It's worth at least having always two of these ramps on you at all times. And you can obviously just go along like this and build it like that. Other than that, I'm finding the building, I haven't found a very particular good way to utilize it in combat or anything. Smaller enemies will go around walls and fences that you put up, but giants generally will just plow on through. So maybe there is a good method for maybe corralling a lot of enemies, especially if you're trying to get one of the classes unlocked where you need to take a lot of damage in one go or defeat 20 enemies in 10 seconds. So that could be an option that I'm going to test next. Now, Souls Potion, don't take unless you're actually safe in your base or you've got something to go ahead and upgrade straight away. You don't want to use it and then suddenly die by accident, losing all the souls that you just opened up. Always make sure you've got potions equipped in the little hotbar down below. Sometimes when you use some of them up, it won't necessarily go to another health potion that you've got, like a larger one. It will sit on a trap or something useless. When enemies' eyes glow red, that pretty much means it's an unavoidable attack. So all you can do is try and dodge out of the way. If you're super lucky, you'll come across these little goblins. I'm pretty sure they're little nods to golden axe where you have the little gnomes with the bags that drop all sorts of loot. You can see all the gold coins leaving out from him. Look how much they drop. So never, never pass up the opportunity to get these. Even if they're in a tough area, find a way to get the stuff out of it. You'll get souls potions and just a whole load of stuff. If you're doing pretty good, but you do need some souls, so you've got maybe some fortifications or you've got the quarries up, don't forget that you can also sell a bunch of your stuff to some of the traders that you find out in the world. These two particularly, are, that's all they do, that you can just sell stuff to them. If you've been researching, you know there's certain resources that you're not going to need because they're for a particular weapon or armor set that you're not interested in, then go ahead and sell them. It seems like a piddly amount, but you'd be surprised how much this will build up, especially when you've got like a full inventory. In an emergency, this is a great way to get souls quick too. Obviously though, at the cost of losing some of them resources. So, the giants on tiny maps can reach your base within like three days. Normally though, in a saga mode, it's usually the fourth day that they may suddenly appear. 
you're better off going to explore and seeing if your ton is one that you can maybe handle fairly easily or not, especially when you're a bit more higher level and you've got stuff to do with the hot biomes or cold. Taking on the giant solo is not really an issue as long as you catch them early enough. If they are getting too close to your village though, then yeah, it could be game over. Check out the guide I've already done for more details about how to take on all four of the giants. But for sure, if you want to experiment with the classes and unlock as many of the 10 points that you can put into the blessings, then get killing these guys. You get a huge amount of XP, 3,000 at least. It's the fastest way to level up is by taking care of these as early as quick as possible. So that's pretty much it for this maybe slightly less obvious tips video. I am going to be doing some more advanced stuff like how to actually open up the portals to go and face the lair boss as well as completing some of the more harder locations like the hideout as well as the underpass too. Obviously my last tip is this, if it looks like it's about to fail, if the gods are about to get in your base, you just got to say nope I can't do this and make your escape. I do believe even in survival mode, it's important that you maybe try and exit through the Bifrost, although to be honest, I can't remember 100% sure. I'm sure someone told me that you do need to exit out via the Bifrost to gain even more experience. So if you want to keep your golden horns, especially though in saga mode, make sure you exit out to the Bifrost. I've put this in another video, but I still think it's important just to tell you guys that yeah, when everything's lost, if they get into your village, that's pretty much it. Even if they've got maybe less than half health, you really got to risk it or work out whether or not you're going to do it. I just made it in the nick of time. You can see you get a bunch of your XP and all the other stuff as well. So yeah, do try and play it multiplayer. You'll definitely get a lot more success in finding and exploring some of the other biomes when you're doing it with other friends or other players. So it's definitely worth it that way too. And also don't forget that some of the unlocks that you get from the season pass, they're definitely going to help you. But there's also challenges that you need to complete to get starter kits and stuff. I'm repeating this tip from my last video as well. But again, it's super important to pay attention to the challenges and see if there's any of them that you can complete a bit quicker, especially for them starter kits so you can mess around. But like I said, I think the harvesting or the tool weapon ones are going to be the best ones to use. Until next time, Ratbags, advanced tips coming your way very soon. Make sure you subscribe for the best in survival games, content guides, gameplay and opinion. And I'll see you, Ratbags, later.